right. I think that we are live. Thank you, everybody, for joining today's webinar. Um, we're just going to give it one minute or so while we let a few people gather in to the uh, the session today. So please just hang tight out there while, while we uh, give it one minute here. We've got a, a group of speakers, I think, all across uh, the U.S. here today. I know I'm, I'm in Denver, Colorado. We have folks in Cleveland, New Jersey, um, Atlanta. So excited to be here with you. Also have a, have a fun fact for you. So um, I don't know if you knew this, but this is one of the shortest peak seasons on record. So there's only 27 days between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. So it's the, the shortest peak season since 2019. So some, uh, some peak season fun facts for you. <laughs> Looks like people are still coming in. Let's uh, let's kick this thing off, though. All right. So for those of you out there, thank you for joining uh, our peak season prep webinar. It's five shipping tips to implement in less than two hours. Um, we've been seeing a lot of people interested in this topic. So uh, thank you again yeah, for joining us. All right. So before we get started, just a couple uh, housekeeping items. So everybody's muted out there. Uh, just a friendly heads up. Um, the slides are actually available now. So if you go into the handout section, you can grab the slides. There's a few links in there that we're going to be referring to. Um, please ask questions throughout the webinar. Um, we're going to get to those questions after we are done speaking here. Uh, for some reason, if we can't get to your question, uh, we'll follow up with you directly afterwards. So just a friendly heads up there. All right. So quick intro here. Uh, today's speakers, we have Zav uh, Xavier. He is our director of product management here at Descartes. Um, uh, Zav oversees our WMS product portfolio. And we also have Troy. Troy is our vice president of customer success here at Descartes, um, overseeing our shipping in WMS customer ecosystems. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Troy to uh, get us started. Yeah, sounds good, Matt. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Um, just as a means of a quick introduction on, on why we're here to talk about the topic, uh, as Matt mentioned, Zav and I come from our e-commerce pillar inside of Descartes. What does that mean? We really focus on helping e-commerce brands deliver on their promise to their customers to get them orders on time and accurately. And we help provide technology to do that. Um, inside of our, our portfolio, we have uh, six different shipping platforms actually currently supporting a little over 20,000 uh, clients around the globe. Uh, so I share that background with you for, for two purposes. One is that one solution doesn't fit everybody's needs, just like you'll hear today, like one tip might not be applicable for every business. But two, we've got quite a bit of experience. So we're, we're kind of excited to share some of that experience with folks today. Uh, my hope is when we finish up, you'll take away at least one of the tips back to your business and see if you can help improve some efficiency or, or save a little bit of money for your business this peak season. Matt, you want to move forward to the next slide for me? There we go. Perfect. Uh, so as Matt had mentioned, we're here to talk really about five shipping tips that we think are sort of low hanging fruit that can get implemented very, very quickly inside of your business. Uh, they're here. I won't go through each one of them as we're going to we're going to dive into these in a few minutes. But not only are these tips that we find that people can implement quickly, they can have a material impact on business and your profitability this year. So let's dive into to number one. And oftentimes we, we think this one seems really obvious. Uh, and, and ultimately what we wanna think about here is eliminating manual mistakes that oftentimes are very, very expensive for the business. So what do I mean by uh, manual tasks and mistakes that are made uh, in the shipping process? I kind of put them into two, two buckets or two categories. Bucket number one is carrier service selection. For example, we've got a customer today that sells fashion and apparel. So they sell a lot of orders. It's a single t-shirt. It's really, really lightweight, and it's going to a residential address. Before implementing some technology, they had a person in the warehouse that spent time on every single shipment, hundreds and hundreds of times a day, picking a certain package size, picking a certain carrier service to ship that 
single SKU t-shirt off to their customers. And it was a, it was a manual task and it was one that was just super, super repetitive. And ultimately they knew what carrier and what service they were going to use. So through automation, two things happened. The package actually went out with the most cost effective carrier service every single time. We see that this order contains a single item. The software takes over and says, single SKU t-shirt, pick this service, pick this packaging, very, very efficient. And it's very, very cost effective because my, my shipper at that point is no longer accidentally picking maybe the wrong service. So in that example, we're doing both of those things in a single step. But rate shopping is a really, really big part of that. You know, we, we tend to be creatures of habits. We get used to shipping with a particular carrier or a particular service. Um, and, and in our experience, we should be looking at this on a very, very regular basis. At least every month, we should make sure that we're doing some competitive compar comparison from carrier to carrier, service to service, to make sure that maybe a service level that I was selecting a month ago is still the most cost effective service for me today. Again, in my opinion, we should look at using technology to take advantage of that. The person that's in the warehouse that's doing the shipping, I want them focused on items in packages accurately. Let's let the software automatically look at the combination of when does my customer need this package, the carriers that I want and service levels that I want to compare. Let's let the software go ahead, pick that for me automatically, make sure that package goes out the most cost effective way possible. Sounds pretty simple generally, I would say, but it can have a huge impact on our savings. If we look at just shipping costs in general, today we have a huge pressure uh, from our customers for free shipping or economy shipping that's really, really essentially cost effective. If we do effective rate shopping, we can oftentimes save 10 to 30% of our shipping cost, which goes directly to your bottom line. To this point, some of the big retailers just recently in, the, in, in October had announced, I think it was Macy's, Neiman Marcus, uh, and Abercrombie had all announced that they were having increases uh, in order value in order to qualify for free shipping. They're simply combating the cost of shipping that continues to rise. And if big brands like this are taking steps to drive order value higher to not offer free shipping, I think it's something that we all need to think about regardless of shipping 10 orders a day, 100 orders a day, 10,000 orders a day. Let's be make really efficient decisions with which carriers and services we're going to use in leverage technology to go ahead and take care of that for us. So Matt, if you don't mind, let's move on to uh, tip number two. Uh, this is one that that I always struggle with because it's, uh, it's tough to imagine, but uh, a couple of years ago, there was a study done and a little over 260 million packages were stolen, uh, totaling a little over $19 billion in, in value. Uh, it was amazing to me when I read that eight out of 10 people in the United States have had a package stolen. And Matt and I, when we were preparing for this webinar and talking about this tip, it really hit home to me because a couple of weeks ago, I got a knock on the door and it was my neighbor asking if we had a camera facing the street in front of our house. And I wasn't really sure why at first, but he had just had his new iPhones stolen from his front porch. And he was hoping for some video evidence to try to figure out who stole his phones. But it's a, it's a really, really big problem. And it's a problem if I'm a, a retailer or e-commerce brand, customer satisfaction is one of the most important things to me. So in the unfortunate situation where a package is stolen, how do I deal with that? How do I react with that? How do I protect myself to make sure the impact to my customer is, is minimized? And a lot of that comes down to being able to quickly address and, and oftentimes replace the products that were stolen. So one of the things that we can do and, and one of our tips for today is talking about how do I protect myself from packages that get stolen? And oftentimes that's through insurance options. And there's lots of insurance options out there today. Sometimes it feels a little bit overwhelming because, you know, do I just chance it and, and I don't use any insurance on my high value shipments? Um, do I use a carrier insurance? Um, maybe I've got a, a blanket policy within my business. Do I use that insurance to cover my shipments? Or do I use a third party specialized insurance provider? Here at Descartes, we happen to partner very closely with Cover Genius. 
and they specialize in providing coverage for companies that are shipping. Uh, and and what, what the objective here largely is, there are a couple of things. One, to save some cost for you as the person doing the shipping that has to file the claim to make sure that I've got a fast and simple and easy way to file a claim when, I'm, when I unfortunately do need to do that. And to make sure I have coverage that's appropriate for my business. You know, if I'm selling t-shirts and the example I, I mentioned earlier might not be that important, but if I'm selling, you know, guitars or artwork, my needs may be very, very specialized. And so the tip here that we think about is make sure that we don't hopefully just chance it and, and hope for the best in regards to packages being stolen. But let's be proactive. Let's implement a strategy to be prepared to handle that situation when I get a call from my customer and my package has been stolen. Great. I've got a good insurance partner. I've got a good plan. Therefore, I can react to my customer quickly, get them a replacement product. And it's really not very complicated. Companies like Cover Genius, they're available inside of a lot of our technology today. It's a matter of a couple of clicks and I can start to turn those on and provide insurance for my high value shipments uh, without a big investment in time. In the slides, Matt had mentioned they're available for download now. Uh, there is a little uh, video demonstration just uh, due to timing today. We won't, uh, we won't go through that. But it's a great little video, just sort of shows you quickly how the process works how easy it is to get enabled. So I'd encourage everybody here today, if you can, take a quick look at that uh, after we wrap up today. And Troy, just to jump in on one thing here. Sure. Uh, yeah, you, you can put tips one and two together, right? You can even automate some of this stuff um, in your platforms. Yeah, great, great point, Matt. Whether we're you know, automating insurance or, or signature required services or third-party billing, any of those things are available to be automated. Um, probably the may, maybe to, to summarize the way I think about automation out in the warehouse is sometime go in your warehouse and just watch your shipping team. Watch what they're doing and look and see where they're spending time. What are they clicking on? What are they making selections manually on? Let's automate those. And Matt, that's a, a really, really good point around insurance of let's, let's let the technology look at the value of the order, make a decision and apply that insurance automatically for me. That way I'm not uh, in a tough spot if unfortunately a package is stolen for one of my customers. Great, great call out, Matt. All right, uh, tip number three for me is think about your overall shipping strategy. I mentioned earlier, oftentimes we get into a, a routine and we get used to working with certain carriers and uh, it becomes just a bit of a, a habit for us and we don't take a take the time to sort of step back and assess does my carrier portfolio portfolio really meet my needs today uh, this time of year and as we prep for peak season it's really common to be thinking about are my pickup times appropriate for me uh, we had a customer that we met with recently in nashville tennessee and what was happening in their business at peak season their their carrier was picking up at about 3.30, quarter four in the afternoon. Well, they had so many orders to get out the door, they had an employee almost every single night that was taking packages, putting them in their personal vehicle, driving them to the airport or to the FedEx, uh, the FedEx hub to get packages out that they couldn't get processed in time for their pickup. So we need to be looking at situations like that and ultimately communicating with your carriers to understand, you know, if I'm the, I'm the biggest shipper for my particular carrier in my area, they're probably going to be fairly flexible and they'll probably work with me if I need a later pickup or, or something along those lines. However, that's not always the case. Maybe I'm a small customer. I'm, I'm one of thousands that this carrier picks up in my geography every single day. And, I don't have a lot of, uh, of influence with a carrier and, and things like pickup time. So, but what I might be able to do is look at an alternative carrier. Maybe there's a regional carrier that can give me some more flexibility on pickup times. Maybe there's a, I use the terminology of a work share carrier, somebody that is picking up packages, doing part of the long haul across the country and injecting those shipments into the postal network, for example, for a uh, final mile delivery. The main point I'm trying to make here is take a step back, look at your carriers. Are you being served well? 
Um, do they have the capacity to support you as we look at peak season? You know, sometimes there are carriers that have to prioritize certain shippers and they just tell you, I don't have any room for more volume. So look at those, the carriers you're using today, start to look at alternative carriers. Um, also, I used the example a little bit earlier about depending on what you're shipping with insurance, but we've got a customer today that they ship guitars that are these very nice personalized guitars. What they found was they just had a lot of damage at peak season. The carriers are moving at such a fast pace that they happen to have more success with one carrier than another. But now is the time to be communicating to the carriers that you're currently working with and I guess really just being honest and understanding where do you fit in their portfolio? How important are you to their business? And do you have some influence to get later pickups or multiple pickups during a day or trailers dropped at your facility? Is that a possibility? And if it is, that's great. If it's not, let's talk to some other carriers, some of those specialized carriers, maybe some of those regionalized carriers. And what you'll find is right now the carriers realize that peak season is coming people are out looking and they're 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 very motivated to work with new businesses so if you have an opportunity to talk with a you know a new carrier they're going to be pretty motivated and it's not a very complex process these days to talk with a new carrier about what you're shipping the makeup of your shipments and maybe you find a good alternative for somebody that can offer you that really late in the day pickup or multiple pickups a day so the big ask here with tip number three for me is take a step back, look at your current portfolio of carriers and have a feeling of, are they serving my needs well? As my order volume grows in peak season, are they able to support that? And do I have the reliability that I need and expect to come back and, com and keep that commitment to my customers of getting their order to them on time, accurately and undamaged? So talk to your carriers, look for an alternative carriers, Oftentimes there's lots of great options out there that can save you some money and allow you to provide that great customer service. So Matt, maybe uh, we can now turn it over to Zav with tip number four. Yeah, thanks Troy. Um, excited to, to talk to you about uh, some tips to, to prep for, uh, for peak season on the warehouse side. So uh, Matt, uh, Matt and Troy really did a great job there talking about the, the shipping part. Um, I'm gonna to try to give you a, a couple of tips here that are specifically applicable to the warehouse piece. So the first thing I, I want to talk about is essentially how we boost the operation within the warehouse. Uh, and across three dimensions, the first one is on setting the stage for efficiency within the, the warehouse. Uh, and then we'll talk about simplifying order processing and then being able to essentially track what's happening uh, the day of the big sale, et cetera. And so if we take a look first at the, the setting the stage for efficiency, well, there's a couple of things that you can take a look at in your warehouse and, and make the job a little easier. So for example, uh, you want to avoid congestion area. So what you can do there is on the picking process, you can space out a little bit your, your pick phase to avoid bottlenecks and get your team moving smoothly, right? You don't want people uh, running into each other because they're they're all there's not enough space for everybody. Uh, when you look at what you're going to have on sale, uh, you may have time to move your sales item or your fast movers as close to the pack bench as possible. Again, you want to limit the travel time between the popular items and, and how they get shipped out. Uh, especially if you're doing kind of like when. Troy Tug was talking about the, the single package, you put in a poly bag and, and you ship it out. You really want to minimize that trial time to do as, as many as possible. Um, and then the, the third little tip here on the, um, the setting the stage on the, on the floor is consider zones uh, to, to help people visualize where they operate. So it could be as simple as putting colored duct tape on the floor or spray painting a little bit of a, uh, uh, some of your, your concrete there to essentially define like some of your picking, your packing, the shipping. Uh, if you have to separate the stuff that's on standby versus ready to ship, uh, making sure that the carriers know exactly what group of package they need to pick so that there's no uh, miss pickup and things like that. Anything that visually can help your workers to know, okay, I need to go here, do that uh, as, as fast as possible. So that's kind of like for the, the layout piece. 
these are like little quick tips there. Um, the next thing, probably a little more than five minutes, is going to be more planning across the warehouse. So um, here I want to take a look at a couple of places in the overall warehouse process. So for example, on the receiving side, uh, you know you're going to have a bunch of inbound, and some of it probably already has arrived, hopefully for you. But in case you still have an influx, you may want to consider uh, pre-labeling so that as soon as your shipment arrives, you can already go ahead and put the labels on and then get them to uh, to their picking location and fast track essentially the, the time they spend at the dock to, to the shelf where they can then be picked. Um, another thing that uh, you may want to do ahead of the, the peak season is for some of the products that you know are going to buy in high demand, uh, do a quick bin count, do a quick stock take count, because that way you know you're starting the peak season with the right number of items. And I think there's probably nothing worse than the first day of the sale being already out of product because you didn't check to see if you had enough product and you're already overselling, getting people angry, etc. So a quick, quick bin count, quick stock take can take like five, 10 minutes, but at least you have the insurance that you have the numbers you have and you can essentially take action there. Um, and, and then uh, something that sounds a little bit silly there, but as you walk through the warehouse, make sure that uh, your labels are correct on the shelves, on the items, that the barcodes are visible, readable. Like if you need to reprint a barcode, do it now. Don't, don't wait and think I'll do it later uh, so that you can avoid any sort of mislabeling uh, or invalid barcode picking, etc. Uh, because that, again, the day of the sale, you don't want to have to run around figuring out, is that the right product? Uh, and, and one last thing is make sure everybody has working hardware. Uh, it sounds simple, but I've worked with some customers where they drink peak season because they don't have enough hardware for everybody and for the time they hire. They take away some scanners from some people, give it to the pickers, and now the people at the shipping station have to do the shipping manually. Uh, there are alternates there. Uh, we, you can essentially look at partners that provide barcode scanner for the month, for a couple of months. And, and, and they're preloaded, ready to use, and you don't have to essentially have them beyond the, uh, the peak season. So that could be a quick, a quick way to resolve that problem without investing uh, a lot of money into the hardware. Um, so after that, Talking about order processing, so here you really want to make sure that you uh, optimize your picking process, you leverage your tech stack. If you've invested in your tech stack, make sure that you use the technology you have available, right? If you can automate, if you can pre-assign tasks, if you can automate some of the replenishment pieces or your move of inventory, use the automation that you have available. Just like Troy earlier in tip one says, hey, Use automation rule. If you can do it automatically, why do it manually? So you still have a little bit of time to make sure that you have, uh, you take full advantage of uh, your automation, whether it's within the warehouse operation or within the shipping part, as Troy mentioned earlier, but take advantage, abuse of the feature available to you. Don't be shy there. And then the last tip is essentially on tracking the progress. So throughout the day, I think it's super efficient to show the teams on the floor where they are, what's happening, uh, and how they're operating. And so you can do that by things as simple as a big giant whiteboard that has the top pick of the day, uh, the number of shipment you're expecting, et cetera. And, or you can go fancy with like, uh, you know, big jumbotrons in your warehouse connected to your warehouse solution that shows the, uh, the life peak we have some customers that do that. But I think the key part is, one, you tell your team ahead of time, hey guys, this is what we're expecting in volume because being prepared emotionally for the volume is going to be helpful. Like you know the pace is gonna be double, so you, you're turbocharging yourself. And then being throughout the day, seeing what's happening, seeing where everybody is, seeing the numbers evolving, so that way you can be mentally ready uh, for, for this. And at the end of the day, celebrate the achievement. Like two minutes, congrats to the picking team or the shipping team. Uh, these are kind of like the quick tip that are going to make a difference, especially on the, on the super busy day. Uh, and then closing tip five. 
Um, so here we're going to essentially take a look at the reverse problem. Uh, you know, we, we want a lot of stuff to go out of the warehouse, uh, but unfortunately, more and more, there's a lot of stuff that comes back into the warehouse either during peak season or right after peak season. And so here, there's also three things that I want to talk to you about in terms of like how you get prepared for the uh, return of the peak season. Uh, and here, essentially three items. One, related to customer communication. Um, two, planning the actual reverse logistics, if you've not taken a look at that. And three, again, taking a look at um, how technology and automation can help. So on the communication side, I think you can start it now. You don't have to wait until after peak season, uh, because what you want to do is work with your customer van and essentially make sure that they're aware of what is the return policy, how does it work, is there a change compared to last year? Uh, is there some special condition for the holiday season? Some of the things that as a customer, I would rather know ahead of time. There's nothing more frustrating to me than trying to return an item and I'm told, oh no, that's not gonna be like that. Or, oh no, now you need to pay for the return fee because it's no longer free. Um, or you have good news. It's free for like, if you return it between November and January. Um, and so, being able to let your customer know ahead of time, hey, these are the return process, change in policies and, on, and whatnot, uh, can really make sure that the, your customers are going to be frustration free and, and they will build trust in, in, your, in your product. Um, on the logistics part of itself, a couple of things that you want to do. Uh, just as Troy said, hey, when you're shipping, talk to your carrier, see if there are other carriers that you want to work with. You can do the same thing with your reverse logistics, right? Do you have uh, return portal partners that you can leverage that can help you in the process, make the return process easier? Um, can you talk to some of the carriers that are doing the pickups to also essentially work with them with some of the return process? And have you planned the storage? for these returns. How are you going to do that? How are you going to store them when they show up at your door uh, in addition to your regular inbound of parts? And so that leads to the second part of it, which is how do you organize internally uh, your reverse logistics process, right? So do you have the right processes or the team is ready to essentially quickly inspect the products that are coming, especially if you're bringing temps? you want to make sure that your temp hires will be able to see how you return your products and, and be able to spot quickly how that's going to work. Um, and leverage again your technology, barcode scanning and otherwise, uh, to help fast track the move of your products that's coming in and going to the shelf. Do you have a good sorting process with specific zones where you can essentially uh, leave out your, your quantum product or defective product without mixing them with your inbound process. Um, and then the last piece is going to be leveraging the technology. I mentioned it earlier uh, when we were talking about the, the return portal, but just like you've seen an increase in porch piracy, as uh, Troy was talking about earlier, there's also a lot more uh, return fraud that is happening with products being already used and returned and tried to be refunded or uh, customer essentially switching the product over and over and over again. Uh, and things that you can do there is also work with return partners. They offer great solutions to help you track your return, prevent fraud, um, help you reduce essentially the, uh, the effort that's if needed to manage your return. And that's the last of my tip. Um, I'm going to turn it back to, to Matt uh, in closing. Appreciate the time. Uh, thank you, everybody. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Zav. Uh, just a friendly reminder to everyone to put in your questions. We, we've already got a few in here. So um, just to jump off into one question, um, Zav, we still have you. Are, are you seeing any mm -hmm. trends in customer return policies this, this year? So what we're seeing is that more and more there are partnership with return portal to try to uh, offset the return cost for the customer and to offer free return but the counterpart is that the shipping cost tends to be increased a little bit. Um, so you pay a little more on your shipping, but you have the guarantee of return free, and it's done through uh, a carrier partner, a, a carrier portal partner that essentially helps track and handle all the refund for you. So what we're seeing is actually more collaboration between the brands 
and the return providers to essentially simplify the return for the uh, for the customers. Okay. It, one more for you, Zav. Um, is it possible to get hardware rentals before peak starts? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And we actually have uh, partners that we work with. Uh, so if you need essentially hardware for mm -hmm. a month, two months, uh, we can work with you, get you in touch with the hardware provider, and they can ship you uh, standard equipment. We can work even uh, in some case, depending on what you have, they can be preloaded with the right the right software, etc. So, and this is something that's done uh, pretty frequently, I would say. Okay, thank you. Um, one last question. Uh, I know we're coming up on time here, um, so I think this one may be good for you, Troy. Can you introduce me to carrier reps? We need to st start looking around at other carriers as soon as possible. So, <laughs> sounds like maybe yeah, an issue with carriers, good... but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good question. Oftentimes we can, Matt, like we've got really close relationships with the, the sales organizations and many of the carriers. So definitely reach out, let us know where you're located. Um, you know, we can maybe help find an introduction to, you know, one of the big national carriers or maybe even provide, provide some uh, suggestions on a regionalized or specialized carrier too, for sure. All right, very good. All right, with that, uh, we're gonna close this out. Again, if you guys wanna contact us or do a live chat or anything like that with our team, um, we are happy to obviously talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, those links both live within the uh, the presentation that is available in your handouts right now. So thank you guys all for attending the webinar. Um, we should have a, a, a recording out to you as well here in the next day or so. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But thank you guys all for attending. Thanks everybody. Thank you.